Hi, this is Juby Provido, and you're listening to Contemplating the Rosary, where we talk about how to pray the Holy Rosary even better. In 104 episodes, over four seasons, we will explore a method of how to say the Rosary the way Pope St. John Paul II, Pope Paul VI, and other Rosary advocates recommend, and that's by contemplating the mysteries while we say the Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be. This podcast is based on the book Beyond the Veil, Contemplating the Mysteries of the Holy Rosary, available at Lazada in the Philippines and in print or Kindle on Amazon, wherever you are. Visit KindlingsPress.com for more information and where you can read and download the episode guide. This is episode 47 of the series, the 19th episode of season 2. It's nice to have you back here listening in on how we can pray the rosary the contemplative way. As always, every time we finish a set of mysteries, we shift gears for a while and do a lighthouse episode where we talk about something related to the rosary. This season, we're exploring the prayers we say when we pray the rosary. And in this episode, we'll look at the Hail Mary. The Hail Mary is basically a prayer of praise and supplication. When we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you, we are recognizing the holiness of the Blessed Virgin. We are praising her for being a creature that is far different than us because she looks more like God than any of us. How is that? It has to do with how we define holiness, and we might need to use language to help us understand it. Holiness is about being different. In Hebrew, the word for holy is kadosh, which means other or different. When we use it for God, we say, Kadosh, 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 or Holy, Holy, Holy. As Catholics, we hear this all the time, especially during Mass, during the liturgy of the Eucharist. But because the original grammar in Hebrew is different from ours, we might not get the significance of repeating words. In Hebrew, repeating a word gives it additional meaning. In that language, there are no comparatives and superlatives. When one wants to say something is comparative to another, they double the word. So if someone is holier than the other, they would say, you are holy, holy. When someone wants to express something in the superlative, the most of its kind, they triple the word. So if someone says you are holy, 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 they mean you are the holiest. When we use holy, holy, holy for God, we are declaring he is the holiest, the most different, or how we would say in English, transcendent. When we say Mary is holy, we are declaring that she is different from all other humans in terms of grace, but never, of course, coming close to God's transcendence. So, she is holy, holy. But why do we even dare say that? It's because of her immaculate conception. All of us humans inherited the absence of sanctifying grace as a result of original sin, but not Mary, through a unique, prevenient grace, a grace she was to receive even before she existed, she was prevented from inheriting the lack of grace that was handed down to us by Adam and Eve. Unlike us, Mary was imbued with grace from the moment of her conception. She never lost this grace all throughout her life because through her cooperation with the Holy Spirit, she never sinned. She always trusted God and cooperated with His will. And since death and corruption of the body is a result of sin, we can imagine how her assumption was another grace that no other human has or ever will have. So when we declare Mary is full of grace, we are saying she has all of these graces from the moment of her conception. We are also saying she is the preeminent member of the church, the highest form of human in terms of grace, Not only that, she is also the creature most perfected by grace, even higher than that of the angels. How can she be queen of the angels if she were not higher than them? So we praise Our Lady with these words, and there are never enough words to praise her, but we try and we say it repeatedly with the Hail Mary. When we praise Mary, we are praising God who is the architect that made her. But in the Hail Mary, we are also praising God directly when we say, Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. This is the core of this prayer, because Christ is the center of everything. In that context, this particular part of the Hail Mary becomes the heartbeat of the Rosary. We can hear a steady rhythm as we say the Hail Mary, and we experience the upbeat when we praise our Lord. As we praise Christ and His beloved Mother, we ask her to intercede for us. 
We ask her to pray for the needs, the concerns, the joys we are experiencing at the moment. But most importantly, at the hour of our death, when we will be judged by her son. We ask her to make our life holy, different, and elevated from just merely worldly ways, so that we may be seen fit by her son to enjoy his lasting embrace for all eternity. Personally, as I pray the rosary whenever I move to a new bead, I have in my mind a particular scene. I stay with it until I am filled with some kind of affection. If it is a scene in the joyful mysteries, I might be filled with happiness. Then as a response to whatever affection I feel, I say the Hail Mary as a way of thanking Our Lady and praising Our Lord for this particular mystery. This way, the Hail Mary becomes a response to what God has revealed to us. Let's lavish our Blessed Mother with praises in the Hail Mary. What woman or man doesn't want to hear praises about them? Don't we write love letters with all those mushy lines when we're in love? Let's think of Our Lady more while we contemplate on the different mysteries of the Rosary. And when we fall in love with her again and again, our Hail Marys become the mushy things we say because our body, our spirit can't contain itself that it has to blurt out beautiful things about her to her. The Hail Mary is truly a beautiful prayer, and let's not let it become something just mechanical that comes out of our lips. Instead, let's let it come from our soul. That's our exploration of the Hail Mary, and in the next Lighthouse episode, we'll talk about the Glory Be. That will come after the Five Glorious Mysteries, which we will start after this episode. Let's end here for now, and don't forget to like this episode, click the subscribe button and notification bell icon so you'll be notified when the next episode drops. As always, this podcast is brought to you by thecatholictalks.com and kindlingspress.com where you can read more articles on the Catholic faith and find more books on Catholicism. This has been Joby Provido, and I'll say goodbye for now, and please join me again next time when we can learn to pray the rosary better. Bye-bye.